As a real estate agent, please do not click and get your mortgage. <laughs> I really need you to use a local lender, especially in this market. And I think people will really be happy because they have someone taking ownership right. of their loan. Which, you know, and as a real estate agent too, if there's something that comes up and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I want someone to call. Right. I can't help you if I can't reach your lender. Right. Um, I can't take care of those behind the scene things that I need to take care of without you necessarily even have to know right. if I can't reach your lender. <laughs> right. So I just feel like, please use a local lender. As, as a real estate agent, I'm begging you. <laughs> it makes everybody's <laughs> lives a lot easier. Um, they know our market. They know what's going on here. They know the real estate agents. They are invested. Right. Um, literally invested in making sure that that loan closes. All right. Hi, everybody. This is Jeff Trudell with Premier Mortgage Lending. Uh, we're here with Terry Byerly of the Infinity Group, powered by Keller Williams. And uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, the current market conditions today, what first-time buyers or even move-up buyers can expect in the current market. So, Terry, give us your thoughts. <laughs> I certainly will. Um, before we do that, though, Jeff, do you want to tell people a little bit about who you are? Um, yeah, so basically I've been a loan officer now. This is my 21st year, um, you know, at Premier Mortgage Lending. Been going strong here for four years and have helped hundreds of home buyers over the course of the last few years uh, navigate the mortgage market, um, particularly with the help of real estate agents like yourself. We've developed a great partnership over the years, and um, I know that my clients are always in good hands when they're working with you. So. Thanks, and I feel exactly the same way. Um, I really do. I, I enjoy working with you very much, and I think we have a really good relationship. Um, and I never worry about sending my clients to you, and I, in many t cases, you've actually saved deals for me, which I <laughs> totally appreciate. Um, but anyway, so getting back to the market, just, uh, you know, people should be aware that it's tough out there for buyers right now in southern New Hampshire and Massachusetts. I'm licensed in both states. Um, especially in certain towns. Uh, we really have a situation where there's low inventory. Um, not a lot of people are selling, but we have tons of buyers, um, largely because of low interest rates and other situations in the economy right now, including COVID. Um, and I'm sure you can talk a little bit more about interest rates and that sort of thing. So, so yeah, it's important to really educate buyers when we get started. Right, right. And so when they come to you and they're, let's just say we've got a first time buyer, young couple, whatever the case may be, and they're looking in a town in southern New Hampshire, um, what's really your approach with them? How do, you know, what kind of questions are you asking them? What are you preparing them for as they start off navigating this whole process? Well, number one is a pre-approval. So if they don't already have that when they come to me, or I'm not 100% thrilled with the lender that they've used, because um, I have some experience, uh, I will send them to someone like you and get their pre-approval, because that's number one. We've got to know what we're working with. Um, and then the rest is really education, like just sitting them down either, you know, at, in the office or these days at a Zoom call, and just kind of going over it start to finish, uh, hitting the basics. Um, it's very important to me to, that my clients know what to expect when they get out into the market. Um, so I really want them to, to be well educated so there are no surprises. So I do talk to them a lot about what the market's looking like right now. Um, it's important for them to understand that if they see a list price in a certain place, they really need to be thinking about paying more. So if their max, maximum budget is say 400,000, I'm like, let's look in the 350, 375 range because odds are, you know, you're going to have to pay a little bit more because there's a lot more buyers than there are houses. Right. And um, so that's number one. Uh, we definitely need to go over that. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, to your point about the market just being explosive, it's, you know, high priced and that type of thing. The one advantage they have for sure is low interest rates. And that does increase their buying power. Um, but again, not all loans are, are equal. The programs are the programs. How everybody fits into them is what makes the loan unique to them. And so, you know, again, when you're putting, you know, your trust in me to make sure that they are a qualified buyer, we do put them through a pretty rigorous process as far as um, getting their, their credit application done immediately because that really is the thing that dictates where we go with programs. It's not really just about the interest rate. It's about 
what does the entire package look like? So what's their job history been? Is their income consistent? And, you know, again, we, we, you and I have talked about this a lot where it's really my job on the financing side to make sure we create a successful homeowner. And by doing that, we don't give them the budget they think they want. We give them the budget that they know they can afford and something that they can work with. And we do build in some flexibility. We never max anybody out and send them out into the marketplace. We always have room for the variables, like the property taxes are different in every town and that kind of thing. But once they leave my desk, we want you to know that they're good to go. There's no gray area there. It's, it's either yes or no. Once that yes is out there, that's a good loan ready to go. So that's where we like putting them in your hands. <laughs> yes, and I do think that as a real estate agent, it's very important to um, kind of see who their lender is, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, because some lenders do a little bit more you know, of the background research to make sure that you know that amount of money is a good amount of money for that particular buyer. Um, and they're not just throwing a number out there and hoping that it sticks. Right. Um, <laughs> so, and that's important too for buyers to understand that you know they need to work well with their lender throughout the process. I tell them, if your lender needs something, you need to get it to them yesterday. Right. Um, and we appreciate that <laughs> a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. But that's all part of the education process is that, you know, if they aren't doing what their lender asks them to do, then every day that goes by, it means we're up against that deadline of our closing date. Right. And that can put the whole deal at risk. So, um, and again, that just all goes back to education and making sure that they understand what the process is and what the timeline is. Um, and we got to discuss that right up front. Right. And, and again, it's, you know, when we, we do this, you know, sort of deep dive into their credit, it's really not a very long process because we can decipher really what everything looks like in a really short amount of time, which is why, you know, when you call me and say, Hey, I need a pre-approval. They're going to look at a house this afternoon. We're going to get that pre-approval to you right away. So it's not like we need to, uh, go through a full background check on them. But what we do understand is, all right, are they a salary employee? Are they variable wage? Do they have income from all different types of of income? And if it's a salaried employee and that type of thing, we know that that's pretty much going to be a a simple analysis to get them pre-approved very quickly. If they're a commission-based person that has all kinds of write-offs and things like that, or they're self-employed, it, that's more of a deep dive into income and we're not necessarily going to go through that process as fast because we do need to see more details but um, <clears throat> same kind of thing we do educate them and let them know that your agent's going to work with you and things are moving super super fast so we can only go as fast as the borrower can go and so as long as you're listening to everybody and you know working towards the common goal then we're always in good shape so right and you bring up a good point and that is speed (laughs) in this market another thing that i try to tell my buyers right up front is you know i need you to be as flexible as you possibly can right when something comes on the market i need to get you into the house if at all possible that day because it's going to sell um we've got houses you know on the market two days before they go under contract, three days before they go under contract. It's rare now that we even see a week. And sometimes right. that's only because the agent listed it for a delayed showing, so there were no showings the first three days or something like that. Right. Um, but yeah, that's really important. You know, If for some reason we need to get a fast pre-approval, um, someone calls me up and says, I saw this house and I wanna see it, uh, I'm really interested, we need to get a pre-approval like that day. So that's important. Um, and it doesn't mean that the pre-approval is no good because it's fast. Right. It just means that you know there are certain lenders that can get it done. Right. Um, or you know I've had situations where for whatever reason we're in the middle of the deal and we have to change lenders. In that case, having someone that can give us a pre-approval and say, yeah, this is going to work really quick because now we're again buttoned up against that deadline. Right. So um, all of that is very important right now. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And. Um And again, I I thought your point about, um, you know, people working well with their lender is it's really it's critical because they do have to understand. I mean, it's a feeling out process for everybody involved, right? Like the the lender and agent relationship has to work, has to coincide all the time, uh, which is, again, I think why we work so well together. You know, you give me a lot of information up front, which is super helpful. 
and then we're able to give all that information right back in a very detailed way. Um, the one thing I think that a lot of the buyers get caught up on is rate, 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 because that's all that's in the news right now. Rates are low, rates are low, rates are low. But at the end of the day, if you can't close on time, um, or you know you heard your friend got a rate and you know not all these loans are created equally so you have to be able to work with someone that's super flexible which is we definitely have you know that ability we're super agile we can get loans closed really fast we have access to 5000 underwriters throughout the country so we can get these loans underwritten really quickly not to mention the fact that we can get appraisals done very quickly so much faster than what typical lenders are seeing right now we're doing these things in 3 weeks or less so um it's not always just about the rate, which does help the buying power, but the rate differential is not going to be very big at all. It's a negligible difference, but as long as they know that, you know, when we commit to them and say, here, you're pre-approved, they know that they're good to go. And I think that just gives you guys more confidence. Yeah. And, you know, exactly what you said, in real estate, it's not always about the money. Um, the money is important to a seller, obviously. Right. They want to get as much money <laughs> right. as they can for their home. But it's about the terms as well. Right. So one of the things I always do is I call the listing agent if I'm representing a buyer and say, hey, you know, what do your sellers want? Um, are they looking for a fast close? Do they need more time? You know, you're, if you're showing a vacant listing, that means the seller's already moved and right. they want to close fast. Right. So I can, you know, if I have a lender that I'm working with that can get it closed quick like you guys can, I can confidently say to my buyer, look, they want 30 days. Right. You know, or faster. Let's you know, we can do this. I can right. count on Jeff to get this done. And then I can call you and you can say, yep, we can do it. Or, you know, if there's a problem, you let me know. But I really think that that's really important. And you also mentioned communication. Um, this is one of the things I pride myself in as an agent is really good communication. And I expect it of, the, of my team and the people that I work with. Um, I get back to my clients quickly. I get back to other agents quickly. I try not to let anyone wait for me. Um, and I really feel like you're the same. If I call you up, nine times out of 10, you answer the phone. <laughs> if I text you, nine times out of 10, you get back to me in five minutes. That's what I do, and that's what I want my lender to do. Um, and you know, I do feel like during the transaction as well, the communication is excellent. If something comes up, you're on the phone to me, explaining to me you know, what the situation is. Um, if everything's going smoothly, I get an email saying we've reached this point, we've reached this point, we've reached this point. And as an agent, there's nothing more important because we're stressing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, throughout the transaction, right. we're thinking, okay, you know, we're coming up on this deadline. We're coming up on this deadline. We come up on this deadline. What's happening? Right. And there's nothing worse, and especially being on the listing agent side, than not knowing what's going on. Like, okay, where are we in the process? Because you don't want to get to the loan commitment deadline and have the buyer's agent call you up and say, oh, by the way, we didn't get loan commitment you know now I got to put back on the market it's like a whole thing and right. it's not good for the seller so um, you know that part is really important to me is to have a lender I can really count on and to know that you know where we are in the process whether right. I'm representing the buyer or the seller I want to know where I am right and you know and another good point there is you know the key word is stress the one thing that we will always try to do is take the stress out of the transaction, not only for the buyer, but for the agents as well. There is a lot of things that goes into a loan. It's not just as simple as give me your pay stub, give me your W-2 and we're good. There's a lot of fine details that happen around this, especially when things go beyond our control. So we have a lot of moving parts in this process, not the least of which is, you know, title and appraisal. And those are the uncontrollables. There's, there's nothing we can do about what gets found in the, any of those areas. But what we can do is communicate to you what is happening. So whether it's good news or bad news, it has to happen immediately, no matter what it is. Um, but again, you know, with as many transactions as you and I have done, the stress gets taken out of the transaction at the pre-approval level, at least as far as I'm concerned. Because when we tell you the borrower is ready to go, I've done all my due diligence knowing that this is a qualified buyer that we have a means to an end with and they're going to be good to go. And we want to take that stress off of them. We tell them up front, say, hey, we're going to be asking you for information throughout the process. We're going to tell you why you need it. And then once we have it all in, we're going to tell you everything is great. Or if we need more, we'll get more. But we try to make it as seamless as possible so that you don't necessarily feel the stress that's on us while we're getting through the process. So yeah. 
that's what we try to take out of that because we know you guys run around like crazy. I've said it over and over my entire career that the agent's job is infinitely more difficult than mine, <laughs> um, not only because you have to cultivate these clients from the ground up. I mean, in some cases out of thin air, some cases through your, your mediums for, you know, lead generation or social media and that kind of thing. But um, they come to me and I'm just looking for information. And as long as they can provide what we need, we have a loan. <laughs> right. So. And I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't stress when I'm working with you very much. I'm like, Jeff, that's good this. to hear because <laughs> I stress about those. Things. I know I do. try. <laughs> I, I mean, the same thing that you're saying, I, I always tell my clients and you can ask them if they remember this conversation. I always tell them my job is to make this process as at least amount of stress for you as I possibly can. Right. Like I will take on the stuff that I can take on. That does not mean that there won't be stress. Right. There's going to be some. But most of my um, clients will come to me and they say, literally at the closing table, that was so easy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because I'm like dealing with a lot of stuff behind the scenes right. that they're not seeing. Right. And I'm not telling them because I know we can resolve this. They right. don't even have to know. Right. Um, and that's sort of where I feel like we make a good partnership because you and I can sometimes resolve things. It's like, what's going on? Exactly. Can we handle this? How are we going to handle this? Um, but really, truly, I uh, there was much less stress in my life when I know my client is as you as a <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> and believe me, it's we feel the same way, you know. And it's it's good because, you know, you've got to meet our team and talk to our team. And I think that's a, that's a critical part of it, too, is that you don't necessarily need to know what we know on our side and know every detail of what's happening, but as long as you're comfortable with the process and you're comfortable with the people on the process side you're talking to, it's just like when we when we team up with our title partners, it's the same exact thing. Like we know that if there's gonna be an issue, they are on it for us from the first second that there becomes an issue. They know how to resolve it, they give us the communication, and it just flows nice and you know, it's not always great news, but more often than not, most of these problems can be fixed very easily. And so when everyone's in the know, again, we just get back to the common goal. Right, exactly. That's the big piece. Knowledge is power. Right. <laughs> so if something does go wrong and you know about it right away, you have more time to, to fix it. Right. And there's not a heck of a lot out there, it does happen, that it can't be fixed. Right. Um, with a little time and a little effort. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but yeah, I do like that. You're the only lender that asks me what title company I want to use because real estate agents have preferences too. Absolutely. Um, right. So, and I, uh, I liked that I get to choose. <laughs> right. Well, and again, right, I think part of it is, is that when, when we do work with these title companies, there, there's a give and take there too. Um, but what we just so happen to mirror up with, you know, right. the right uh, the right companies that work really well for our process. And it's super, super important from our perspective to know that they know how to handle the closing packages we get from the multiple lenders that we work with. And that's a really, really critical point because if you get like a, a small family attorney who happens to be related to somebody, you know, in the transaction, but they only do one or two settlement transactions per year, that gets really, really convoluted for them because they may not know how the systems work, they may not understand the timing behind it. Um, and then with the speed that we try to work with, it can overwhelm them really quickly. So we're having good partnerships in every facet of this thing is is really important in the transaction. And it's again, it's not stuff that you know, the buyers necessarily see, the sellers certainly don't see it. Um, but these are the things you and I stress about on right. a regular basis. Right. So. The, the behind the scenes stuff that yeah. we know has to be done. Right. Um, right. You know, the paperwork end of it kind of thing. Right. right. Um, so, and I, you know, I think that's another thing that um, buyers and sellers don't always understand the extent to to which we are working behind the scenes on their behalf. Right. So that they don't have to deal with all that stuff. Right. Um, right. And, you know, that's how we obviously earn our pay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, exactly. why pay us? I know. It would be nice to relax after like one transaction, but it just right. doesn't happen doesn't that way that because way. we're, you know, we go a thousand miles an hour all the time. But yeah. I mean, it's, it beats the alternative, right? Yes. I mean, we want this, uh, we want the market to continue to be strong and robust. And do um, you have any insight on what you think is going to happen here in the early 2021 market? Or Well, it's interesting because we have had, I mean, I'm speaking pretty much Southern New Hampshire here. Um, we have had um, 
kind of nothing on the market <laughs> for the longest time. <laughs> About two weeks ago, I think, I did a social media post where I kind of went through all the, you know, several towns around us. Um, and I could just look what's on the market in, you know, the price range between 300 and 500,000. Right. Because let's face it, that's where most people yep. are at. Um, and I was looking at numbers like one, zero. Um, and I was, there's literally nothing on the market. And if something came on, it was gone. Um, and I think that's really hard for buyers because they're excited right. and they want to go out and buy a house. Like this is the time and there's nothing. Right. And then when they do go and look, it's like all these multiple offers. Um, I am starting to notice, and I don't know the reason, but I'm happy. Maybe because we're getting to the end of January and people are starting to uh, think about, okay, well now, you know, what am I gonna do next? Sellers are starting to put more houses on the market. So now I'm looking at three <laughs> or five. <laughs> right. So I feel like sellers are starting to understand that this is a really good time to sell. Right. Like a year ago when COVID first hit, the market just went, you know, way down. And I think people that made people really nervous and they're like, well, you know, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. Um, and then gradually prices just up, 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 up. And they really have not stopped. Um, it's going to be interesting to see because we didn't have really a spring market last year. It's kind of started in the summer. Right. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see because normally around here, if we don't get too much snow, we end up with a spring market kind of late February. Right. So obviously we haven't had too much snow, <laughs> so we'll see. But, you know, the projections are, and this is, again, I don't want to take away from your portion of the program, but <laughs> not at my all. understanding is the projections are that while interest rates may rise, they're not expected to rise dramatically. Yeah, no, and that's everything that we're hearing is is on point with that. You know, the Fed came out and said they're going to keep rates low until 2023. Um, they don't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily translate into interest rates for mortgages, but we know that they're really, we don't know how much more they can go down so there's definitely uh, more upside potential than there is downside potential. Right. But the moral of that story is that there's going to be a lot of affordability going forward. And, you know, it's going to be interesting really to see whether we have the move up buyer continue because that's been a huge trend the last couple of years just because of that affordability factor and massive equity <laughs> right. uh, build from a lot of people who've only been in their homes two, three years. Um, whether there's going to be a lot more downsizing going on, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Right. Um, so I, one of the things I wanted to ask was whether or not you're seeing any, are you seeing a lot of relocation here to the area for, due to COVID? Um, have you yes. had a lot of clientele from around the country that's inquired here? Or? Yes. So that's been really interesting because um, since COVID started, there's sort of been this mass exodus from more populated areas. Mm -hmm. And I think there's kind of two things at play here. One is people kind of want to get out of where there's a lot of people right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and kind of had more space. And the other thing is because they're working remote and some have even anticipated working remote long term, they sort of feel like they can live anywhere. And New Hampshire is a strong draw, um, particularly since many of the states around us will have, you know, home prices are even higher. Um, so people are saying, okay, well, I'm looking at New Hampshire and I can get a lot more bang for my buck, so to speak. Um, I can get a bigger house for less money and interest rates are low. I can work remote. I don't have to worry about that commute. Um, I can get away from people because right. we have more space. Um, so we are really seeing a lot of people come into the area, which again is adding to um, the problem we're having with too many buyers and not enough sellers. Right. Um, that said, you know, I don't want to make it sound like don't buy. Um, this is a terrible time to buy because it's really not. It's right. like you said, um, you you got a lot more buying power with these low interest rates. It's not like there's no inventory. There is inventory. You know, maybe your first offer won't get accepted. Maybe it will. You know, maybe you'll have to make three or four offers. But eventually, <laughs> you <laughs> right. will find the house that is supposed to be yours. Right. And I have yet to have anybody tell me that they regret buying the house they ended up with. Right. Um, nine times out of ten, well, really ten times out of ten, they say, well, thank goodness we didn't get house one, two, or three because this house is so much better. Right. I, I don't have a single person that has said to me, gosh, you know, this house is fine, but I wish I'd gotten two houses ago. Right. Um, so, again, I don't want to discourage anyone from looking. Right. We'll get it done. Yep. Um, 
you know, between you and me, we have a lot of tools in our toolbox to get, um, you know, sellers to say, oh, that's a good offer. Right, right. No, I agree. We do. Um, so, yeah, no, it's it's one of those things where I do a lot of pre-approvals for people um, and, you know, they they keep telling me the same thing. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. And I just go back to them and say, listen, you have to be persistent but patient at the yeah. same time. Um, you have to continue with the activity because it's the only way you're going to find something. And then I don't want to say that you may have to settle because that's not necessarily the case. You're going to have to find something with opportunity or maybe you do land on just the diamond in the rough or you're the exact thing you're looking for. But you do have to be a little bit patient with it. Um, and I think one of the really important things that people need to know, too, as far as like the length of the pre-approval, because this comes up all the time, like when my pre-approval expired, what do I do? And it, it's really just a matter of updating credit. You know, we don't just keep pulling credit over and over and over again. The credit will go for 120 days. And then really all we do is collect new documentation. So unless anything really major has changed, there's been um, someone lost a job or someone changed jobs or something along those lines. The pre-approval status is going to remain as long as nothing really crazy has happened with credit. We just need to update documentation. Um, and that's happening more and more just simply because of the lack of inventory. Right. Um, but like you said, I'm starting to see more activity with pre-approvals. We are hearing from sellers that they're getting ready to list. Some are relocating. Some are, you know, going to buy cash and, you know, that type of thing. But um yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, are, are you doing anything with new construction or seeing any stuff pop up in more rural areas? Um, yeah, actually. I mean, not a ton of new construction where I want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's where all the people are. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, we are seeing a lot of new construction or a fair amount of new construction. Not as much as I would like, but yeah, it's happening. So, And again, that's an option for people if they have some time. Right. Um, and then they're not competing with you know, the whole multiple offer thing, if they can, if they can say, look, you know, I'm going to do this new construction, and it's going to take nine months or whatever, six right. months uh, for it to be built, if, as long as they're patient. Patience is key. Right. Um, having said that, I have not yet had a buyer that didn't find their house within three months and most less than that. Right. Um, so as long as you're patient and you're not expecting to buy a house next week, <laughs> <laughs> then you should be okay. Right. And I do think too that that is a little bit um, part of the reason why we have low inventory is sellers are thinking, well, that's great, but how am I gonna buy? Right. So I just wanna reassure, um, the, you know, there's stuff to be had out there. It's going to happen. Right. So. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, it's been a very healthy market for the last, it's going on like eight years now <laughs> where yeah. it's been a, a steady incline. It's gotten a little bit crazy recently, but um, people are employed for the most part um, locally. Um, we've got a good, strong housing market. We've got well-qualified buyers everywhere. So hopefully we'll see this all, you know, start to even out a little bit, get more inventory on, and have another great year ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm really hoping for a strong spring, lots of inventory, people making a move. Um, I think the longer we live with COVID and the longer people see that these low interest rates are here to stay, right? Um, at least in the short term, you know, a couple of years, hopefully, um, then, you know, they'll get more comfortable with the current environment and relaxed and say, okay, I know what I'm looking at. Right. And talk to their real estate agent <laughs> and get lots of information and um, talk to their lender and get right. lots of information. Because really, like I said before, knowledge is power. Um, and really sitting down and talking about the whole thing from start to finish. This is what you're looking at. <clears throat> this is the process. Um, and I really feel strongly that that's important. You don't want your buyers and sellers to come into a situation that I didn't see this coming, this wasn't expected, right. um, especially if it's something that's a normal part of the process. Right, right. Um, they have to know, yeah. and because then they'll relax. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's, you know, the, one of the things that I hear a lot, especially when, you know, you'll send a referral over and then I don't hear from them for maybe three weeks or a month. And then when I do finally talk to them, there's a lot of people that will tell me, well, you know, I was just really nervous about this. I don't know where to start. And I was like, well, you've already started. You know, you, it's really just as simple as a phone call for me. You know, you've already guided them through all the things they can expect. Maybe you've already shown them a few houses. Then you told them to talk to me. And then we just try to take them off their guard a little bit. And then, and that's really it. Have a very simple conversation. 
And when they realize how easy the application process is, once we start going through that, uh, the results of that, they're like, oh yeah, this is no big deal at all. And that's where we like to keep it, keep the stress right. off of them and keep it down, so. Yeah, and I definitely <laughs> think too, like they don't know what they don't know. Right. So while I might say to a client, ask me any questions that you might have, they don't know what questions they have. Like a lot right. of times, especially with first time home buyers or someone that hasn't bought in a market like this or someone that forgot what it was like because they've lived in their house since 1974. Right. <laughs> um, you know, you really have to start from the beginning and try to fill in any blanks that they might have in their mind that they don't even know they have in their mind. Exactly. Because you can literally see someone at the end of a meeting, like when they start talking to you, their body language just changes over the course of the meeting. Right. <laughs> and they say, oh, I feel so much better. Like, because they know what they're getting into. Right. And it's not this big unknown. Right. Um, and so that's key. It is. And, you know, it's interesting because everybody will always start their search online, yes. which is fine. It, yes. It's, you know, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> yes. But the one thing you cannot do is just press button, get mortgage. It's That's not how that no, works. No, no. And um, your real estate agent will not be happy and they if just, you do. <laughs> they just need to have the conversation. And that's all we encourage them to do. They don't have to use me. Right. They can use whoever they want to use. But they know when they're talking to me, or should know when they're talking to me, they are going to get the answer no matter what. It's going to be full disclosure. This is how the process should go. These are the costs you, know, costs you can expect. And this is really how the transaction will go. Right. And it's really that simple. So just you have the conversation. <laughs> such a good point. Such a good point. Um, people do like, sometimes I think they're afraid to interact with someone face to face. Um, and so th they are sort of, um, oh, let me just click and get yeah. my mortgage. <laughs> right. As a real estate agent, please do not click and get your mortgage. <laughs> I really need you to use a local lender, especially in this market. And I think people will really be happy because they have someone taking ownership right. of their loan, which, you know, and as a real estate agent too, if there's something that comes up and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I want someone to call. Right. I can't help you if I can't reach your lender. Right. Um, I can't take care of those behind the scene things that I need to take care of without you necessarily even have to know right. if I can't reach your lender. <laughs> right. So I just feel like please use a local lender. As, as a real estate agent, I'm begging you. <laughs> it makes everybody's <laughs> lives a lot easier. Um, they know our market. They know what's going on here. They know the real estate agents they are invested right um literally invested in making sure that that loan closes and that it's and the same goes for the agent is that we always encourage everybody work with the local agent yep. they know the market better than anyone you're going to be in good hands you need to start here it's not just go and like oh i saw a listing and i'm going to go talk to that person it's again it's a relationship build it's it's a quick one happens quickly but use the local agents right. and and then it just makes the process so much easier so. yeah i mean it's about trust is what it finally no boils doubt. down to and and like you say relationships and if you're in a relationship with a real estate agent or a lender the more you work with them and the more you get comfortable with them the more you feel like you can trust them right not always and in that case it's time to bail right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um but it, you know if you're if you're in a situation i mean this is the biggest investment of your life that you're ever going to make right i mean if you upsize you're obviously going to make a bigger investment right. but the point being there's nothing out there that you're necessarily going to buy unless you're independently wealthy that's going to cost more than this right so you owe it to yourself to work with someone that you really feel confident about, that you trust, that you know is going to get the job done for you. Right. Um, and like you say, nine times out of ten, that's not the person that you click on. Right. That's right. the person <laughs> that, you know, maybe somebody else used or maybe your real estate agent or your lender is recommending. And, um, you know, we work with people all the time. We know who's going to get the job done, for lack of a better way to right. express it, and right. who isn't. So. Well, I know you're going to get the job done like you always do. Thank you. And As are I you. think, um, <laughs> yeah. But I want to thank you for coming in today. I, it was really great catching up. I know we're going to have a great year. Yeah. And uh, so call Terry, everybody. And hey, call uh, Jeff. <laughs> and we'll make sure we get your transaction done and uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah. All right. Good. Have a good 2021. Thanks, Jeff. You too. <laughs> All right. <laughs>